Okay, I'm very nervous. I've never done this before. Um, yeah, uh, lots of people come up to me and they say, right, I've come up with this premise, so it's going to be a comedy in a cafe, or I've come up with this drama where it's all set on a cruise ship. That I would say, personally, that is not the way to start writing. The best, so the best way to start writing is to um, come up with your characters first because that is what people are interested in. If you've got good, char great characters, then uh, you're going to get interest from production companies. Um, the best way, I would say, to find your characters is to write from truth. So if you've got your notebooks, this will be the first thing I want you to write, which is find uh, people that you know that interest you. They don't necessarily have to be your friends. Uh, but they could be acquaintances, somebody that you met in a pub that you thought was really, really interesting. And that's a fucking brilliant place to start. So just write that person's name when you get a chance. Um, sorry, can you do Carrie's mum's voice, please? So do that if you can get a chance to do that. That would be great. Um, so the most important thing for me anyway is characters based on truth. Because viewers, production companies, agents want to be able to re relate to a character straight away. So once you've found this person, this is just a starting point if you've never written before, uh, that you find interesting, um, you need to become like a, a criminal profiler. So you need to know every single thing about this character. Your character should also, this is really important, should be flawed because nobody in this entire existence, bar Jesus, whether it existed or not, was 100% perfect and nice. And other, on the other side, no one is 100% a cunt. That's what's amazing about human beings is like we're, we're different shades of light and dark and uh, we have amazing qualities, but really bad qualities. Um, I remember Simon Armitage wrote a poem that was about a bloke who takes his mother to church every week, but also steals 20 quid out of her purse. And it's, it's those kind of characters that I always find really interesting to write for. Okay. So, and if you're doing a comedy, then this person that you're deciding to write this character for um, should be, uh, they should make you laugh, but for the wrong reasons. They shouldn't be funny. They should be funny for all the wrong reasons. I, I, that was a note. I just wrote that. Okay, so get your notepads out because these are the, te the 11 questions that you should ask yourself about this character that you're choosing to write for any character that you're choosing to write for and this is how charlie and i um the similar questions to what charlie and i use when we're coming up with characters like big mandy or kerry or curtain or arthur or len and they're quite random some are quite random and some um are sort of more on point so number one write this down how do others see this character and number two, who does this person think they are? So, for example, David Brent, um, everybody thought he was a tit because he was a tit. Um, but question number two, who does this person think they are? Um, David Brent thought that he was funny. He thought he was popular. Uh, he thought he was a character. Um, so, and, and as Kerry, you know, Kerry is an embarrassment, really, in her village. But who does who does she think she is? She thinks that she's hard. She thinks that she's um, interesting. She thinks that she's intelligent. Okay, so that brings me on to question number three. This is a really random one, but what would this person's favourite film be? And I know it sounds completely random, but it's so specific. What somebody's favourite film is, it says a hell of a lot about that character. Okay, uh, moving on to number four. What pictures would, the, would this character have in their bedroom? Really random one. 
But, uh, for example, Kerry had lots of pictures of wrestlers in her room, footballers, uh, and that just goes to show that she... Um, and they're kind of athletic males or strong males, and that shows how much admiration that she has for her dad because he's not present in her life. So there's like a sort of psychological thing for that. Um, five, this is quite an important one. How successful is this character romantically? Like, is this character uh, like a... Are good at relationships are they terrible um are they kind of asexual a bit like kerry where she just the thought of any sort of relationship would completely freak her out bar um kane dingle um or are they sort of a bit of a lothario uh have they been divorced are they married their relationship says a lot about them are they in the closet for example um are they confused about um their romance their romantic status okay number six quite an obvious one what is this person's dream it's just really good and it's always great to have that answered in your own head because it's brilliant for an arc uh for, for your script so where your character wants to go or where any characters want to go um number seven what is this person's biggest fear so that's also really brilliant uh to figure that one out so that uh for ex in in comedy and drama to put them in a situation of conflict to come up against their biggest fear like Carrie's biggest fear for example was the fact that her dad didn't love her and she dealt with that biggest fear by being in complete denial um which is a really uh is a is a way that a lot of people deal with their fears is to completely deny it um okay next question question number eight uh it's a bit of a random one but very important what clothes does this person wear and you've got to be so specific to like branding and even like if they wear whether they wear earrings how they wear their hair what trainers they wear or do they wear smart shoes like figuring out what this person wears is such a, a massive thing because i think it's also like subconsciously it's um what we show it shows if we care about ourselves or not so i dress like a fucking tramp most of the time so i, I don't really give a shit but i, I don't but that, that for me is very important like for example we made sure that curtain had to wear completely crisp white clean no fear clothes because that was such a part of him he um he, he he loved order and he loved um things being uh well you know what i mean um moving on okay number nine if this person were caught telling a lie how would they react it's it's a good question to would they be honest and say fuck it i've just fucking lied sorry about that or would they go to the nth degree trying to cover up the lie? Uh, number 10, what is this person's daily routine? That says a lot about the person. Do they even have a routine? Like, for example, Kerry probably doesn't. Curtin very much does. Um, and question 11, who is this person's hero? Like, for example, Kerry has her dad. Curtin has his nan, I suppose. But who is their hero? Um, and also, so then after that, so once you've come up with those for that single character, before you even think of a premise, think about other characters that you want to ask those questions for. And I want you to think of yourself like a producer for the Big Brother house, where you're thinking, right, these putting all these people together in this one place will create conf conflict. So the best comedy or drama comes from very, very different personalities. It's very boring to see something I'd, I, where everybody's just sort of the same in a show. I don't think I've ever seen that. Um, another thing that really helps, I think this is my last point, so I don't bore you all to tears. And then I might ask, if you, uh, you can fire some questions at me. 
um, is a collage on the wall. So upstairs, I've basically just print off things that I think. So I might see a jacket that I think would be great that my character would wear, and I print it off and I put it on the wall, or I see, uh, or I print out a picture of Nando's because I think that's where they'd hang out. Or so creating something visual that you can see. Uh, can really help you build a world and that's the first thing about character building <sighs> yes tick 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 that felt rather good so do you have any questions before I end this J Jules Hippie said can you tell my son Rowan to shut the fuck up so I can hear what you're saying please Rowan, shut the fuck up. Daisy May Cooper is talking, doing her teaching business. How do you get your industry, how do you get your writing to the right people in the industry without connections? That's really interesting. That's something that Charlie and, Charlie and I uh, came up against. And I will, uh, I tell you what, we'll do more on that tomorrow's session. But, um, you, you you find a way, and my way was to go on Google, look up all the production companies and that there ever was, do a bulk email. So it must have been about 700 production companies and just send them all the same thing because that's how lazy I am. But um, there, there, are, there are ways, and what we'll talk about is getting your script together um, over this time of the coronavirus all you have to do is 10 pages that's all production companies want and you uh, and a treatment and then we'll talk about covering letter and how to do other things to put in your little package and also I just want to end by saying um, you have no idea how desperate broadcasters and production companies are for new talent. Like, I know that it feels like an industry that you can't break into, but if you had any fucking idea how desperate they are, they are desperate because there is nothing out there. Um, and they're just, they're, they're desperate for stuff. So never, ever feel ashamed or that you're not good enough to put anything on paper and, and send it out. And I think that is all. I don't want to bore you all for tonight. So um, you've got your homework. If you've written down, if you haven't written down the quest uh, questions, I'll post them so that you can do that. God, I feel like a proper teacher now. Um, I have to set some teddies up and go teach them like that. Um, yeah, and just work on that, uh, you know, over the weekend. And then on Monday, we'll uh, talk a bit more about trying to get your script together to send to production companies or whatever else. All right, I love you. Good night, everybody. See you Monday, 8 p.m. on the dot.